In this tutorial series we will be creating an AI capable of taking turns smoothly, overtaking and recovering from a crash. This AI has most of the features you need for an AI except collision avoidance which is opening an entire different can of worms. This AI is still more advanced than my older AI tutorial. We'll be using behavior trees to create this AI, so it's easy to modify this AI to your liking. We also will be using the same blueprint car as the player, so we don't have to create a copy of all the cars made specifically for the AI. If you're happy with all that, let's get into the video. Okay, so when you boot up on the launcher, this should be the first window you see. This is where we're going to be creating our vehicle template project. And I'm going to be using the vehicle template because it's included with Unreal Launcher 5. So it's just going to make my life easier. But like I said in the intro, any car will work. So to create that project, you just want to click on games and then click on vehicle. And we're going to give this a new project name. We're going to call it basic car AI. And then we can just go ahead and press the create button and that will create our project. So I'm going to skip to where it's done creating. Okay, now that we're in Unreal Engine, we want to make our car ready for AI. Now, the current problem is our car isn't actually made for AI. Now, it's pretty hard to explain why that is. So let's go ahead and open up the car itself and then I'll talk about why it isn't suitable for AI currently and how we're going to fix that. So to do that, we want to open up the content browser, go to vehicle template, blueprint, and the new car is the sports car. We're not gonna be doing the off-road car, but you can do it easily by just following what I did with the sports car. So we're gonna open up the sports car and we're gonna open up the sports car pawn. And we're going to just dock that to the window. And if we move our mouse just a little bit down and zoom in, you'll see our problem. Now, our problem is that we're currently using input access and input actions, which are great if our car is going to be driven by only players, but uh, AI doesn't use input access. The AI controller doesn't do that. So we need some way for the AI to relay input, but without using input access, because that's not going to work for the AI. So there's a lot of ways you can do that. You can cast to this um, car from the AI controller and then do stuff like that. But we're not going to be using casting. We're going to be using blueprint interfaces. Now, if you don't know what a blueprint interface is, don't worry, it's not that hard. I'll guide you through this. So <laughs> we'll just work through this together. Uh, blueprint interface is an asset inside of Unreal Engine that contains functions, but these functions don't have any code in them. They only have inputs and outputs. Now, why don't they have any code in? How do we put code in them? Well, the idea is you hook it up with main blueprint classes, and then those classes, the main ones, can add custom code into those functions specifically tailored for their uh, class. So that means that you can have a steering input, a a throttle input and you can have all those awesome functions but that means that each car can have their own code for that that means you can make this ai compatible with bikes or anything you really want to as long as they also have a throttle uh, brake steering and a handbrake input so that's the great thing about this this also means we don't have to cast to call those functions which is just going to be way better for performance. So let's set up Blueprint interfaces. So to do that, we can just go to the vehicle example map, open up the content browser, go to the content folder, and because everything's going to become quite messy, we're gonna create a folder specifically for all the AI stuff. So we're gonna right click on the content browser, create a new folder, we're going to call this AI, uh, yeah, AI. So this is just where everything AI related is going to go. We can go ahead and open it up and then we can right click and under blueprints, we can click on blueprint interface and we're going to call this BPI for blueprint interface underscore um, can receive 
via the call input. So the idea is, is usually with a BPI, you tell it or ask the question of what the main class can do. So if you have something that's paintable, you call it BPI is paintable. And here we're going to call this can receive vehicle input because, well, we're trying to find out what can receive vehicle input. And let's go ahead and open it up. And then it's automatically going to be docked. And when you boot it up, it's already created a function, but this function has a name of new function, which is not 13. So what we're going to call this is a set throttle input. So what this function will handle is it will send input to our car from the AI. So it will set throttle input. It's important to note that in Unreal Engine, by default, the car's throttle and brake is on the same axis. So the brake is minus one on the throttle. So we're not going to have one set brake. It's included into the throttle. Maybe a bit confusing, but don't worry, you'll get the hand of it. Now that we have one for the set throttle input, we also want to create an input for it because we, of course, need to send the throttle input. So here at the right side at the bottom, here on the details panel, we're going to add a new input. We're going to call this throttle. And then it's also going to be a float value. So just set it to float. That's because, well, it's going to have decimal numbers. Now that we have the set throttle input, that means, well, now the AI can send a set throttle input code. But of course, a car doesn't just throttle and brake. It also turns and throws handbrake. So we're going to just go ahead and add a new function. And we're going to call this one set steering. And this will handle the steering input. I'm also going to add a new input under the detail panel again. We're going to call this uh, steering. And I'm also going to go ahead and set this to a float value. And then finally, we have our handbrake. So it's the same thing, add a new function, go ahead, call it set handbrake. And then we're going to add a new input. But this input is not a float because a handbrake in Unreal Engine by default is usually a Boolean. It's handbrake is on or off. So we're going to change it from float to Boolean. And then we're going to call it handbrake. Awesome. Now we have a way to set throttle, steering, and handbrake. I noticed that I call it set throttle input. I'm just going to remove the input. And this means we now have inputs for the set throttle, the set steering, and set handbrake, which means that we can apply all of these to our car now. That's really cool. But sometimes, uh, we're not going to need it now, but sometimes you might want to know what the current throttle steering and handbrake input is on the car for the AI. Maybe you want to do a reverse in a certain way. So you want to know how the car is currently performing. So we're also going to create get functions, which means that we can get the throttle and steering and all the good, all those good stuff. So to do that, we can actually just add a new function and then we're going to call this one get throttle and then we're going to just add an output because we want to get the value we don't want to send in a value we want the value we're going to change the output's name to throttle and then it's also going to be a float because decimals and we're going to add a new function and we're going to call this get steering we're going to add an output because of course output and i'm going to call this steering and then for the handbrake, it's the same thing. We call it get handbrake. And then we add an output. And this time it's a Boolean because on or off. And we're going to call this handbrake. And boom. Here we have set throttle, steering, handbrake, get throttle, steering, and get handbrake. So we have setters and getters, which is perfect for AI. But now we have all these cool functions, how do we get it to work with our AI? Now it's pretty simple. We can just compile and save here and close all of this. We don't need it anymore. 
add here in our movement control and brake lights, or aka where all our movement code is, what we can do. Oh wait, the first thing we have to do is actually hook up the blueprint interface. So yeah, at the top at class settings, we're going to go to implemented interface here on the details panel. And you can see there's no interfaces. There's no blueprint interfaces connected. So let's go ahead and add a blueprint interface. So we can click on the add button and then we can type in BPI underscore can receive vehicle input. And now if we go to the left side in the my blueprints, you'll actually see that under interfaces, there's actually get handbrake, get steering, get throttle, set handbrake, set steering, and set throttle. So everything's ready to go. Um, I'm just going to compile and save for safety because I've noticed sometimes you do get bugs with just hooking up a blueprint interface and not compiling. It's very weird. Uh, and to get these gets and set nodes, we can easily do that by just right clicking in our uh, event graph and typing in. Uh, we want to do the set steering first or the set throttle first. So you just type in set throttle and you're going to see there's an add event event set throttle so now if you do this you actually see that there is actually event set throttle and i noticed the throttle is a boolean which is funny so let's just go back into the bpi and i'm going to go to the set throttle and i notice i made it a boolean it should be a float very sorry for that kick ball and save now if we go back Here's the throttle code. Perfectly fine. Um, now there's a problem, of course. That means we're going to have to duplicate this over. And of course, we don't want to duplicate code. We'll create a function. But before we worry too much about that, let's just get the event set, handbrake, and all the other stuff ready before we talk about functions. So here, this input access move right, which is the steering. We'll just right click, and then it's set steering you can see there's an add event event set steering perfect and here's our steering float and then here at the handbrake we're just going to right click and do set handbrake and you're going to see there's an add event event set handbrake boom and here we have everything ready to go now there's one problem um if we want to hook up the set throttle and the set steering and all that, we have to duplicate the code in the event graph, which, um, of course, you know, if you have to use code multiple times, it's just better to put it into a function, which is what we're going to do. We're going to convert all of these movement stuff into functions. So let's start off with the throttle. So what you want to do is you want to select everything along the throttle code, except the comment block, and then you can easily just right click and collapse to a function. And we're going to call this function update throttle. And the reason why I'm calling it update and not set or anything like that is Unreal Engine doesn't really like it when your Blueprint interfaces has the same names, uh, the functions has the same names as the one in your main graph. So that's why I'm calling it update here. And I just want to also save, so I'm just going to save now. Okay, and everything's saved. Now, the problem is that it creates three input pins, which isn't normal. There was only one throttle input, so there shouldn't be three inputs. So to fix that, we're going to go to the right side here on the input, and then we're going to remove the A input and the input pin. And then we're going to hold Alt on our keyboard, left click on these two bottom pins. And then we're going to move them up here. And of course, we broke the function on the inside because we removed pins. So let's double click and open it up. And then we, we're just going to move this update throttle to clean it up a bit. And here's our two connections. So the bigger and the greater and equal then also had a throttle input at the top to connect it there. And then you can see here's a pin without an input that was also the throttle. So we're going to connect the throttle here. And that's everything ready, set, go, I guess. And we can just compile and save, and there shouldn't be errors because we fixed everything. We're going to worry about adding the update throttle. This is set throttle now. We're just going to convert everything to functions. And here in the input axis move right, 
you'll actually see um, it's pretty easy. You just select the vehicle movement components and the set steering inputs, and then you right click, collapse the function, and we're just going to call this function update steering. Perfect. Let's just move this up. And then here's the hardest one to do because um, Unreal Engine is weird like that. So you can see in, in production, it's handbrake. It uses a press and release. And for the press and release states, it has two different booleans. And <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, the easiest way to solve this is to not have two different functions with different Boolean values. It's just better to create an input and set it for each of these states. Don't know what I mean? Don't worry, you're going to understand now. What we want to do is we want to select the bottom vehicle movement component, or the only one, and then select the bottom set handbrake input and the bottom brake light. And then we want to right click and collapse that to a function. And we're going to call this update uh, handbrake. That's what we're currently working on. Perfect. And here's a bit of weirdness. It has an output, a vehicle movement component. That's not normal. We don't have any outputs on this function. So we can just remove that output and hold Alt and disconnect that pin. Now, of course, there is a problem. There isn't an input for our handbrake. So we can easily fix that by just opening up the update handbrake, moving the new handbrake here in the update handbrake, and then just connecting the brake lights to that new handbrake. And then to just make this a bit cleaner, we're going to click on update handbrake and rename it to handbrake. Perfect. And now we can compile and save that. And it is going to error out. If we go into the event graph, you can see the problem here. This is expecting a chaos vehicle movement component, which of course we don't have one here. So you can just remove these two nodes. You can just delete them. You can copy and paste this update handbrake, connect it to the pressed, and then set the handbrake to true here and leave it for false on the released. Perfect. So now we have the player's uh, movement set up again. Now we just need to set up the AI's uh, movement. So um, to do that, it's practically the same thing. We can go to the left side here at the bottom, drag our update throttle down here, and plug it in there, and plug in the throttle. And then for the steering, we can just duplicate the update steering and just put it next here, connect the steering up, and then you can just, just you know, you can just copy both of these nodes, take our event sent handbrake, and here I noticed the fin, um, we don't have to have two of them because the AI usually sends if it wants a handbrake on or not. So we can just have one update handbrake, I connect it up, and then boom. Now our AI has its movement set up. Now there is a few problems. Uh, there isn't stuff I really like here. So if I click on one of these functions, you actually see it doesn't have any access specifier or it does have one, it's public. Now, usually in Unreal Engine, you don't want too many things public. So in this case, we don't want it public. We just want the AI to call an event set throttle, which will then call this eternally. So in the access specifier, you just want to change it from public to private. And yeah, that's perfect. Now just do it for the um, update steering as well. We're going to do it a private and then the update steering again. Okay, not the update handbrake. We just want to set it to private. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand what you're doing here. It's just better game design overall. You don't want too many things um, accessing functions directly. You want some way to hand information to that function. So um, if you want to learn more on that, there's a lot of videos on YouTube to describe that, but I'm not going to go into much detail here. And this is perfect, except for one thing. We still need to set up the get handbrake, get steering, and get throttle code. Now that's actually really easy. In the interfaces tab here under the My Blueprints, you can open up get throttle and then it reacts like a normal function. Perfect. So what we can do is we can right click and uh, we can type in throttle and there should be um, 
the get throttle input under the chaos vehicle movement component. So you can just click on that and it's also going to add a vehicle movement component because of course it needs that to get information from the car. So we're just going to move this get throttle here and move up this get throttle input, connect it up here and connect it up here and then connect the return value. Awesome. Now we can easily get the throttle when we want. So we can compile and save. And then we're also going to have the get steering. So you can just double click to open that up. And then it's the same thing. You type in get steering. You're going to see under the chaos vehicle movement component, this get steering input. So you can just left click and add that. And then we're just going to move up this vehicle movement component. Plug in the get steering here, the get steering inputs, and plug that on the return node. Plug in the return value into the steering. Perfect. And now we just need to add the handbrake. We're in the final stretch, people. So you can also just go ahead and go into the handbrake, and you're going to see there's a get handbrake. Just right click and type in get handbrake. And you're going to see this chaos vehicle movement component, get handbrake in input. What's a bit weird here is this doesn't need uh, any execution pins to work. So you're just dragging the return value and you're done. Now we can compile and save. And now we just close everything here except the event graph. Now we actually created a bug secretly. Now this bug is very minor, uh, but the, what the bug is, is that and now if the car hand brakes, it doesn't turn on the brake lights. Now I was wondering, why is that? Nothing like that makes sense. So if you don't want to learn more about how to fix that minor detail, you just click off the video now. We've, we've practically done everything we have to. But if you really want to fix this small bug, it's pretty simple. In the update throttle, you just want to double click and open it up. And our problem here is this do once node. So when we added this to a function, this do once node, in the main graph, it had a constant function that was running or a constant variable. It was constant. But once you put it into a function, that means every time this function is called, it actually resets the do once, which is not ideal. So we want to create a variable that can work globally or work in this um, specific uh, area, which will allow us to save the do once current state. But um, so we can have it every time we call this function. So to do that, we're going to have to create a new variable. And this variable is going to be the do once value. If you have a better name to call this, Please put it in the comment section. I would really love to hear your suggestion because I don't, I don't really have a good name for this. I'm going to save that. I'm also going to make sure this is private so nobody can access it. And then all we have to do is we have to drag out this brake light. Then we have to drag the do once value and set this to this. So the do once value is practically um, not. Um, it's in the state of it's off. But once this do once is called, we actually want it on because the do once is over. It's uh, done. So you just want to check that to be true. Then we can drag this do once and all this to the side. And then what we want to do is every time this reset node would have been called, we want to go ahead and reset our do once value. So we're going to drag in our do once value again, do a set, and then we're going to drag it in here, drag that into the reset. And now we've reset the do once value. And then finally, the start closed should be the do once value. So we can do a get do once value, connect that to the start close. Then we can compile and save. And that's everything sorted. We have completely set up our car for AI usage as well as player usage. This means that now players and AI can use the same car without us having to create different types of cars specifically for the AI car or AI controller and specifically for the player. Both of them share a car, 
and that's just going to make our code way cleaner in the future. So if I go to the vehicle example map, you'll see if I play, if I throttle, the car throttles, if I S, or brake, the car brakes, and if I handbrake, the car handbrakes. Of course, it's really slow at, uh, doesn't really handbrake well at high speed, but you can see here at low speed, it's handbraking. Perfect. Our car is set up and everything's ready to go. So now it can take us to the outro. In the next episode, we're going to set up a spline that acts as a path for our AI car to drive on. We'll also add a few functions to it so it's easier to retrieve some information from it. But that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe, hit like if you liked the video, hit dislike if you didn't, and um, see you guys next time. Good night, everybody.